Hey everybody, if you've been following all the news on Power Pages lately, you'll see that Copilot is popping up everywhere. We have the little sidecar here with the Copilot. We have the Copilots when we're designing pages. We have Copilots when we want to change the styling. But a new Copilot was just being rolled out today, which allows you to, you as the pro developer, be able to write code for your Power Pages website. So let's take an example. I've created a very simple list component. I've called it widgets. I've thrown that on a web page. I have a corresponding form that I've added here so I can actually edit the widget. So if I take a look at this website, I see I have a bunch of list of widgets here. Again, it's just rendering that list. I click on this and I have this form and I can go in and begin to edit this particular widget. Now we have this widget rating field which I have two and I have this widget rating reason, but let's say that we have a business requirement where they only want the widget rating reason field to show up if we have a value of you know, three or less. So if I put in something like four, we want this to disappear. Pretty simple. Now, if we were doing this in a model-driven app, then we could simply just use a business rule, but of course we don't have business rules in Power Pages, so we're gonna to need to use JavaScript. Um, so how do you write this piece of JavaScript? Well, you used to be able to, you probably have like me, a little library of snippets that you cut and paste and you inject and you make adjustments, but using the Copilot, we're able to do this a lot faster. Let's take a look. So I'm now in Visual Studio Code for the desktop. So this is something I've downloaded and installed. And of course there's instructions on how to do this. The other thing I've done is I've gone into the extensions and I've made sure I have the latest and greatest Power Platform tools installed, which of course I do. They've already been updated, so we don't need to worry about this. Now, the thing I'm going to do is going to go into my terminal. And of course we want to do something like um, go into the place where we store our local Power Apps Power Pages, naming Power Pages files. And of course, I'm just going to um, here, going to download this. Again, just a quick recap pack. We're using the Power Platform command line interface, Power Apps Portals, PA Portal, download, where I'm gonna download it to the path, the ID of the website. We can use the list command to get the list of the websites. I am using the new enhanced data model, so I need to specify that. I'm gonna overwrite this just to make sure I got the latest and greatest uh, code from the uh, site I'm working on. So it's gonna download all of this, which is cool. Pretty quick, it's gonna download this to my local machine, all of this stuff, that's been done. Now what I wanna do, I'm gonna close the terminal and I'm going to go file, I'm gonna open the folder and I've opened the folder with my code. Notice something here. We have this new pop-up. Maybe you've noticed it. It says get help writing code in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript languages for Power Pages site with Copilot. This is pretty awesome. I'm gonna try Power Copilot for Power Pages. And it's telling me, hey, in my own words, describe what I need. I can get help with writing code, Power Pages site, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, do things with the web API, um, do a little bit with Liquid, um, customize tables, all this you know, wonderful stuff. So let's actually take a look at the list of files here. And remember, we wanted to hide and show based on that particular widget. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to actually select that particular JavaScript under the basic forms, the edit widget. Selecting this is where I'm gonna to wanna to inject code. Now, up until this point, I'd have to go in and begin writing JavaScript code. Now, of course, I've done this quite a bit, and maybe many of you have as well, so you'll find it easy. But sometimes, um, with this, especially with Power Pages, you're trying to remember, what was the syntax again? What did you do? So you might have kind of gone to a library of code snippets you keep in OneNote or some other places and paste it in or try searching on the web, which I know there's not a lot of samples out there. Um, there, there are a few, a lot of the MVPs actually have some great sites showing some of these JavaScript examples, but now we want to write it ourselves. What do we do? Well, I'm going to go back into the Power Platform node here, and I'm going to ask, ask Copilot to write the code for me. So I've prompted it. I've said write code that will run when the form loads and when the widget rating value changes. So those are the things we want to trigger the code on. And Let's just go up here. And then I also want to say, check the, rate, the widget rating value. If it's three or less, then show the widget rating description field. Otherwise, hide the rating, the rating description field. Blah. A lot of talk, but I've given that prompt. And then what it's done, it's actually now generated code. It's saying you may add the following code to your JavaScript file. So 
we see that here. It makes sense. It looks good. Interesting, it's actually even grabbing the the name of the field and it's pulling that. That's because I I basically highlighted or I started from that form field. So it's the copilot's able to recognize those dataverse field values, which is really handy. I'm going to insert that code in the editor. And now that it's in there, if I want to make some changes or make some edits, I can go ahead and do this. Remember, this is copilot, not go do it for me, uh, pilot. So it really makes sure everything looks all right. We can make some adjustments here if you want. This actually code looks pretty good right off the bat. It's still important you need to understand how this code works. So we're quickly doing it. It's making sure there's jQuery. It's uh, gonna be kicking off that function. It's gonna making sure the document is ready, meaning the page is fully loaded before it runs. It's going to be triggered off the on the change event from the docs widget rating field. So that's when it's gonna be triggered along with the form being loaded. It's basically setting a variable of the value of the rating and it's doing some comparisons here. So again, it's important you understand how this code works because once you have to go in and debug it or expand upon it, you're gonna to wanna to know how it works. But this is also a great way to learn. If you didn't know how to write this code snippet, well, here's an example and you've described it and generated it. So that's all good. I'm gonna hit Control S. So now I've saved this file locally to my workstation. But now what I want to do is upload it back into my, my website. So I'm just going to go back to terminal again. We're just going to recap on the, um, the, uh, the pack CLI commands, PAC, PA portal upload, uh, the name of the path, and again, specifying the data model. So we're just going to do this. So what it's going to do, it's going to upload it. Now, of course, in a regular ALM system, you're going to want to make sure you're committing this to your source code and you might have other batch files and scripts and whatever else. So it's good. We've uploaded that. Let's take a look at our site. So I'm back in the design studio. I'm going to hit uh, preview. And again, for those, again, quick reminder, the preview refreshes the cache. We're going to want to do that. So it's going to show this on the desktop. So once again, I'm on my list of widgets. I'm going to drill down and take a look at this particular widget. And again, we're seeing that this widget rating reason there I'm going to change the value to a four now and notice as soon as I do that that field you know disappears because the script is run now I didn't tell the code to hide the label that's something I can go back to into my Visual Studio code and you know make those adjustments so this of course is regular development back and forth so I've only just scratched the surface on what the um, Copilot can do and generate code for you. Of course, we can do other things with the web API, um, even generating HTML snippets and CSS snippets. Like, it's kind of limited, to, you know, limited by your imagination of what you can do in Power Pages with this Copilot. This is a preview feature, so I'm sure the 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 crew is looking for feedback. So if you run into stuff, there are the little thumbs up and thumbs down buttons. So if your code sucks or what <laughs> generate sucks, put the thumb down. If it's working well, put the thumbs up and they're gonna evaluate all of this stuff and you know, just make it better. So try it out and really excited to see what you're gonna be building in Power Pages. And thanks again for joining this video for another uh, boost of information.